Hello everyone. I probably don't need to introduce myself, but I'm going to anyway, just in case anyone new is watching. I'm Dark Ninja. I'm a former Gold League player. I have a 3 mark chieftain. I got up to 98.7% on the Object 279E. And I also got up to 99% marks on the 907 with full APCR. So I know what I'm doing when I say I can play World of Tanks, but I have a secret for you. And that secret is that for the first 8,000 games, I had 800 win 8. Um, and I had hardly improved whatsoever um, after starting playing the game. Um, I used to only auto-aim tanks. I didn't know that manual aiming was the better way to do things. So even against like an E100, I would just auto-aim. And I played a lot of artillery because it required less skill for me. Now this video, I'm going to be teaching you how I got from that state of an 800 win 8 player all the way up to 5k recents, all the way up to like 5400 recents at some point. Um, if I look, if I'm like looking down at any point throughout the video, just bear with me. It's because I have like a script to like keep myself on track because this is going to be pretty long. Um, but let's just get right into it. So what changed for me? How did I go from a very poor player with 800 win 8 to a great player? Well, there are many factors, but I'll touch on the most important ones uh, first. Uh, and then I'll give you a step-by-step -step guide on how to improve. So, if first of all, if you are improving already, then good for you. Just keep doing what you're doing. And if you see improvement over the last thousand battles compared to the thousand battles before that, then just keep what you keep doing what you're doing until you hit a plateau. That's my advice. Um, if if it's not broke, don't fix it. Um, but first, let's talk about how do you even judge whether you are improving or not. How do you even know whether you're getting better at the game? Well, in my opinion, the best and easiest indicators to use are your win rate. Um, and your average damage in a certain tank. So for example, if you have 2,000 average damage in the T62A for 500 battles, then you play 500 more battles, then your average damage goes up to 2,200, then that means you did 2,400 damage um, for the last 500 battles, and that means you're improving. Um, Winnie is also an okay indicator, but it can be boosted artificially by playing low tiers and by playing light tanks. So if you are using Win 8 as an indicator, just keep that in mind. Um, but if you start to see your win rate and your average damage um, plateauing, like if they stop going up, then you have to change something in order to start improving. Um, and I recommend following my, my examples and my advice in this video in order to do that. Um, just just uh, to get it out of the way though, you have to keep in mind it can take thousands of games to see a reasonable amount of improvement. So don't expect um, your, your, your winning to jump by like 300 after watching this video or something. It's going to be a process. So my first major leap in performance that I had came when I upgraded my PC. I was playing at 20 FPS on a shitty laptop. Um, it was actually a desktop, not a laptop, but I had shitty internet and it was a major hindrance to my ability to aim and play the game in general. So when I upgraded to a 30 FPS laptop and I got much better internet, I immediately saw better results. Um, this tip is pretty obvious though. Um, everybody knows that if you have a better PC and internet, then you're going to do better. So in this video, I'm going to focus more on the things that you that are within your control. Um, However, if you do happen to suffer from poor FPS, then I recommend dropping your graphics if you're able to, in order to, that will help you improve basically. So the next step I would recommend um, taking to improve is to fix your settings. This will probably not make a big difference to your stats in general, but it can literally improve your stats in a matter of days. Um, so it's worthwhile to do it and just get it over with. Um, so that you can get it out of the way because changing stats sometimes means you have to get used to it It's better to get used to it sooner rather than later. So um, I'll quickly show you my settings 
just in case you're curious, but I would recommend watching Kaizu's video on his settings if you're interested in learning more about uh, uh, what which settings you should choose and which ones are important and why. Uh, so let me just quickly touch on a few important settings. Uh, turn this on. I won't explain why in this video, but just do that. Um, I would turn this to always, that's kind of personal preference, but I would turn it to always or at least upon pressing alt so that you can see um, the, the HP of enemies especially. Turn this to always um, and then down here you want to turn all of these on. All of these minimap features, they should, they should just always be on. There's no reason for them to be off in my opinion. Uh, I won't talk about graphics, it kind of depends on your PC. Um, Let's talk a little bit about the reticle. So turn this to diagonal for sniper and arcade mode. The reason why you want to do that is you can use this thing to line up um, your your damage indicator. When you take a shot, you can you can blind shot them and in return. It's one of my first videos in my how to play like a WAP Pro series. You could look it up. It's pretty easy to find if you look through the playlist. Um, Outlining, I would turn this to simplified and then have texture, fill, or some variation of that. Um, for marker, just make sure you have HP left. It, it can be out of total or not, doesn't really matter. Um, let's see, anything else? Oh, I guess for the graphic settings, you should have grass density to off and then turn foliage transparency off. This makes it so you can see through trees when you pull into them and then turn grass and sniper mode off. Um, and then lastly, you should turn on, let's see where it is. I don't even remember. Uh, turn on display team HP bar, HP number and HP difference. This will help you determine whether you're losing or not. Um, it's one of the indicators that will tell you whether you're losing. There's other ways to tell like your map control and how many tanks are dead on each team, but it's just useful to have. So now that we're done with settings, uh, let's get to the part that most of you have probably been waiting for, the actual uh, practice. Um, upgrading your PC and improving your settings will only get you a little ways after all. The main method I used to improve I used to improve was by watching players who were better than me and then playing thousands of battles while integrating what I watched from better players into my own gameplay. That's basically that's like a basic summary of what I did but I'll go into more depth and more specifics of how I did that. So back in around 2012 I didn't have a PC for about two years so from 2012 to 2014. My win 8 at the start of that period was 800 but I was still very interested in World of Tanks, so I watched it a lot. And when I say a lot, I literally mean I watched thousands of hours of World of Tanks from players who were better than me. Um, I started watching Quickie Baby at first because he was teaching me the fundamentals of the game, like uh, bush mechanics and how to side scrape. But eventually, as I started to learn more, I graduated to watching top Russian players, such as uh, Strike from Navi. And Lucique, I think that's how you say his name, as well as Embryonic Journey from the EU server. And by the time I got a new laptop two years later, my win 8 had jumped from 800 to 1900 without playing a single battle. And I'm not even joking, my win 8 literally jumped that much overnight just by watching better players than myself. That's all I did. Um, I guess we'll exclude the fact that my PC did technically improve a little bit, but. Honestly, that, that wasn't the main reason why my win 8 jumped so much. It was just because I watched better players for the most part. Now, let's go into more depth about what what I specifically what did I specifically learn by watching those players. Well, I learned a lot, but besides general knowledge about tanks, such as their alpha damage and their reloads, and whether they were an autoloader or not, um... The most important thing I learned was where to go at the start of each battle, depending on what tank I was in. So if you're a player with under 5,000 games or so, or even like 10,000 games to be honest, or if you're a player who just hasn't watched a lot of top players play the game, I would recommend that you watch them and watch where they go in their initial and mid-game positions, and, and that will tell you a lot about how you should be playing as well. 
And for those people who have less than 10,000 battles and who haven't watched a lot of top players, this is probably the biggest area of improvement for you. Um, because if you're currently going to the wrong initial positions, there's only so much that you can do to do enough damage to be satisfied, I guess. And it, th that's one of the main reasons why I made my Play Like a Lot Pro series, is just to teach, um, teach players where to go at the start of each battle. Um, so, the second most important thing I learned from watching top players was how to determine the correct level of, of aggression in each situation. I'm going to quickly switch replays. Alright, so where I left off, I was saying the second most important thing I learned from watching top players was how to determine the correct level of aggression in each situation. So, there are some times when it's correct to push your advantage, for example, if you're facing a bottom tier or you're facing a lower tier opponent in a heavy tank or you're hauled down on an enemy, it's good to be aggressive in those situations. You want to be trading trading with uh, enemies. But there are many, many times when there simply isn't a way to create an advantage against opponents. For example, let me just pause this replay. If the enemy had taken the hill with like five medium tanks, then pushing up here would just be pointless. There would be no reason to do it. Um, you would just be caught in a crossfire if you tried to play this area here from the hill in this, so it wouldn't be worth it. You would just have to play patient. And so what I learned is that in situations like that, the best thing to do is to do nothing. Um, you need to play patiently and wait because 90% of the time an advantage will come to you if you wait long enough. If you don't have an advantage, just wait for one. Um, I learned this by watching Navi Strike uh, play the Amex 5100 back in the day, which was the meta damage dealing tier heavy tank at the time. And that's a great tank for learning, uh, for learning that patience will reward you uh, most of the time, more often than not. And I integrated this lesson into my own gameplay by playing thousands of battles in light tanks and the bat chat, as they're both tank types that require a huge amount of patience to play and to do well in compared to heavy tanks. As a reminder, oh, yeah, as a reminder, the main way I improved is by watching players who are better than myself. But the other half of the equation is even more important, which is playing thousands of battles trying to integrate what I learned. So you can't just watch, um, watch players to get better. You have to actually integrate what they're doing into your gameplay. If you're not doing that, then watching them is pointless. If you don't play enough games, you simply will not, you simply will stop improving. But it isn't enough to simply play the games on autopilot. So you can't just play and expect to improve. Sure, maybe for the first few thousand battles that'll work, you'll just naturally get better. But after some time, it takes a deliberate effort to improve. Um, that's what I did for my first 8,000 games. It got me nowhere. I just played on autopilot. I wasn't thinking about what I was doing, and as a result, I didn't improve very much at all. In order to learn more, you must be actively thinking about what you could have done better. Let me say that again. In order to improve, you have to be actively thinking about what you could have done better. Um, you don't need to go as far as... Uh, to watch your own replays back, although that is a good practice, but a good habit to make is to constantly ask yourself after every single battle or even after every single engagement, what could I have done better in that situation? Did I make a mistake somewhere along the way which caused me to die early in the game if you died early in the game? Could I have prevented this loss if you lost? Even in, even during wins, and even during good games, ask yourself, what could I have done better? And be honest with yourself as well. Um, should you have seen something coming? Did you commit to a flank and there wasn't enough tanks with you, and you should have known better than to keep pushing that flank, even though you were overwhelmed by enemies? Uh, you want to constantly analyze your own gameplay in retrospect to see what you could have done better. Uh, practice asking yourself, should I be playing more at, more passively or more more aggressive in this situation? Usually the answer will be more passively, but not always. At least that's the safer of the two options, but... So with enough practice, your decision... Your, with, sorry, with enough practice, uh, decisions become subconscious as a part of uh, a learning process. 
in neuroscience called chunking. And basically what happens is you learn how to react in complex situations and you learn how to anticipate things before they even happen subconsciously. And so that's why when I do these replay reviews, sometimes it'll take me 25 minutes to explain what was going through my head in a game. When in reality, when I was actually playing in a game, the game only took 8 minutes. So, so I've gotten comments before. People are saying, there's no way you thought all of this during the battle. So you're just making stuff up in retrospect, aren't you? And in a way, they're kind of right. Um, it's true that I'm not just thinking... I'm not just uh, thinking about every single decision that I make. And the reason why I'm able to get away with that, why I'm able to make those decisions in the first place, is because I've... I've made those decisions consciously in my head manually um, for thousands and thousands of battles and so after a while you see a very complex situation and you automatically know what to do it's just automatic you don't have to think about it you just subconsciously know what to do and you and so that's why in retrospect basically what I'm doing is just uh, rationalizing my subconscious decisions a lot of the time. I mean, I still make conscious decisions in the game all the time, but that's what a lot of it is. Um, but it those, as I was saying, those those subconscious decisions don't always come naturally. You have to manually think through similar situations very many times before it becomes second nature to you, just like it is for me. In addition to analyzing your gameplay retrospectively, another important habit to form is to think proactively. What I mean by this is, when you are in a battle, think consciously about what you think will happen next, and then ask yourself, is there some change I need to make in order to prepare for, for what is about to happen? An example of this is minimap awareness, which is very broad, but... Um, I'll give you a specific example. For example, if the other flank has 10 enemy tanks, say you're on Abbey, and, it, and that flank only has 5 allied tanks, ask yourself, is that flank about to fall? If so, am I about to be flanked? Should I be concerned? Should I turn around, push forward, or should I just wait? What should I do in this situation? That's proactive thinking. If, you, if all you ever do is play re uh, reactively, You'll miss out on a lot of opportunities, especially in endgame situations. And that's probably one of the best things that competitive has done for me. Competitive World of Tanks. It's, it's made me think proactively. Because you have to think about what your opponent will be doing in a, in a minute, in two minutes, in five minutes, whatever. What, what their endgame play is, basically. And you can kind of uh, apply that to random battles as well. So, lastly, when you hit plateaus, it's important to challenge yourself to a sufficient degree. So this is something we know from, lear from neuroscience. Learning happens quick quickest when we are sufficiently challenged, but not so challenged that we're basically hopelessly overwhelmed. So, for example, I would not recommend a new player to play the Batchet or the T100, at least not for a few thousand battles. Because those ch those tanks are simply too challenging for a beginner player. Sure, they might be able to do okay in it, but it's too challenging to the point where they're not learning at the maximum rate that they could be. They'd learn more by doing a more simple task like playing an S Conquer or an IS-7. You can say the opposite for more experienced players. If you've been playing heavy tanks for thousands of battles and you're hitting a plateau with your DPGs and win rate, then playing a challenging lightly armored tank like the Batchet or Leo might be a good way to improve at the game quicker than you already are. Or if you've hit a plateau, maybe it will help you improve whatsoever. Maybe maybe you just aren't getting enough practice in different kind of situations by only playing your S-Conk. Uh, so playing like a, a lightly armored tank like the Batchet, especially the Batchet, which has very long exposure time, so it's very difficult to play. It will force you to learn when to play passive and how to make good trades without bleeding, despite having no armor or hit points. So for me personally, I I used to play light tanks a lot. It was my it was my most played class by far, and I I attribute a lot of um 
my improvement at the game to playing light tanks because they're just if you play for damage in light tanks you you have to learn how to trade well because if you don't trade well you'll do basically nothing because you don't have the hit points or armor to make good trades so in conclusion summing up the whole video in order to improve there are basic things that you can do such as improving your hardware and internet learning the basics of the game like side scraping and the camo mechanics and you can improve your settings again you should check out kaizu's video i'll link it in the description and you can also improve your equipment choices and your crew your uh, crew skills i might make a video about those things in the future we'll see but once you have all that figured out the best way to improve boils down to two main things at least it did for me um, watching players who are better than you and integrating things you learn from them into your own games by playing thousands of battles now you don't have to watch the best players in the world or even watch other players at all in order to improve that's not what I'm saying I just think it's the optimal way to improve but if you don't want to do that you can still take away the tips that I I gave you in this video about about uh, retroactively analyzing your game seeing what you could have done better and analyzing your own gameplay rather than analyzing the gameplay of better players so one second so if you do decide to watch better players than yourself though to improve then when you do this it's very important to learn ideal initial and end game position or er, initial and mid game positioning and to learn how aggressive or passive you should play in different situations those were the two main things that you should watch out for when watching better players than yourself in addition your mentality is very significant in improving firstly you want to actively think about what you could have done better after every single battle and i mean every single one if not every single situation that you that you play in Secondly, you want to practice practice uh, proactive thinking, which involves a lot of awareness of the battle as a whole. So you need to be checking your mini map. Lastly, you want to make sure you are sufficiently challenging yourself in order to induce learning. Which, uh, while not trying to play at a level you simply aren't at yet. So, like I said, uh, that, that could mean switching to a more lightly armored tank if you're experienced or playing a heavy tank if you're a new player Another great way to challenge yourself by the way is to attempt gun marks and you can for example start at tier 5 if that's where you're at currently and Go for gun marks on your tier 5s and then you can uh, Progress from there go up to tier 6 tier 7 tier 8 tier 9 and then eventually something like a reward tank or a crown something that's very difficult to mark so lastly um, I just wanna that's basically it for the video but I wanna tell you that I'm gonna leave a link to the players I recommend watching in the description along with Kaizu's video about um, his settings guide basically in case you're interested in, in improving your settings because I didn't really talk much about that this video um, by the way, some of the players who I'm going to link speak Russian or Ukrainian, but some of them speak English, um, so you can pick, but all of them are great players you can learn from, so I would recommend any of those players that I linked on there, um, including myself, by the way, twitch.tv forward slash darkninja underscore underscore underscore. I'll leave that link down there as well. Uh, I do stream on Twitch fairly often, and if you're also interested in, imp in improving then uh, you, I have a YouTube playlist you can check on my channel where it's it's called the Play Like a Watt Pro series where I teach advanced tips um, that you can use in your own games. Alright, that's uh, all for this video. Thank you for watching and I'll see you guys next time.